Hey everybody, Asher here, back with some more Kerbal Space Program, and today I kind of got a grab bag for you, because this is going to be about a variety of missions that you get to do kind of in the interim between exploring within the system and getting your reputation up to go into bigger and better places. So we're starting off here with what I was hoping would be a rescue mission, but this is one of my last launches I did in the .01 update before switching the atmosphere back to the .0 levels. So... Here we have a design that I've used before, and I've gotten some complaints from viewers saying it, they couldn't get it out into the atmosphere. So I wanted to give it a run to at least see, hey, if I can at least rescue somebody in orbit, that's fine. But there's an explosion there that I don't really understand why it happens other than there's some collisions. There's going to be another random explosion that appears in just a moment. I really have no idea where that second explosion's from. But yep, that one right there. So we're just flying up right now, and like I said before, this is... This Once upon a time, this staging system would get me pretty much to the upper atmosphere really reliably. I'd be burning my uh, SRBs pretty much at like 1,500, 1,600, or 15,000, 16,000 meters. And that's not exactly what's going to happen here today. My biggest complaint with the atmospheric changes is that you, you kind of go from a realistic atmosphere. Yes, things accelerate faster. And yes, you're more likely to set things on fire in the 1.0 uh, atmosphere. But it's just more fun to play with than the uh, 0 0.01, 0 0.02 atmosphere, which is something the devs have actually acknowledged. The squad's always been very good about listening to community feedback, and they kind of took a weekend off after release and came back to a massive shitstorm. So it's something that they're going to work on. And once the uh, atmosphere is not soupy like pre-release, I'll be happy to go back to that so that some of y'all who want to fly along at home will kind of be working with the same tool sets. But I did put a video together to see there and see here's the SRBs. Well, we we're at about 15,000, 16,000, but you'll see real quick that after this, uh, we're not quite in the same area here. My apoapsis is still fairly low. Normally I wanna be shoving it much further out here, but SRB's gone. And maybe one of the key differences between how some of you all had flown this at home, this can still make it up into orbit. The thing that I just don't really like is because before when I'd done that SRB burn, I'd be at about 50,000 meter apoapsis. So what I have to do here, I have to kind of rechange my mission log from being more of a rescue mission and a satellite mission to just launching a satellite. I set off my LV-909s. Now it sucks because by itself, uh, it's not strong enough to actually make it out of the atmosphere, but four of them with the rocket on the bottom, that will be enough. So Kimberta, unfortunately, is going to have to wait. But we do make it into orbit, spoiler alert. So one of the contracts that you can get is actually to set things in orbit. And this is good practice just to try and make nice, neat circular orbits. This is a mission for an equatorial orbit. There's another one you can get for a polar orbit. They're all pretty good. But you see here I have my apoapsis trying to match it as best as possible with the periapsis there. Because the way orbital mechanics work in this in real life is that you can't just stretch your orbit out however you want just by burning straight forward. It's you burn it one side of it and it'll stretch out into the farther end of it. So you have to be on the opposite side of where you want to stretch out your orbit to. So you see I've made a new apoapsis and I've used the maneuver nodes and mousing over the cursor to make at match orbits pretty much and then I do the same on the other side. Now this is an equatorial orbit. I didn't have a perfect launch. My plane is like at 91 degrees but it's close enough and that's something that's easily fixed just by doing a normal or anti-normal, those are the triangle icons, burn on the uh, ascending or descending node, which is something we've talked about in previous videos as well. And these are just kind of missions where it's good for money as long as you can have kind of an economical launch. And the launch system I have, some of you all have said, oh my god, it's especially way too big, especially those of you who watched the live stream before. But fortunately, with some new rockets unlocked, it's going to be more streamlined from here on out. But once you get into the orbit, you just got to stay stable for 10 seconds, and there we go. Yay, money. Now, another mission that I did, and you see there's a little bit of jump here. Part of the reason is because my whole recording before this point got eaten, which really irritates me because there's a rescue mission. Not very dramatic, but Ronnie Kerman was around Minmus, and I was able to rescue him finally. You may remember a video before where I couldn't get the rescue mission to go. So I have some temperature logging uh, missions here, and you want to try and stack missions as much as possible. So I have a rocket that can do a rescue. That's why I have a two-seater lander can, although I could have just gone with a uh, probe to, or actually I did use a probe core to do my SAS steering here. Reason being is that I didn't know if Ronnie Carmen was a pilot or anything that, and on top of that, I brought a scientist with me. So you can see I'm in a polar orbit. Polar orbit's actually pretty easy to get to. You just want to kick your apoapsis out a little bit and do a normal or anti-normal burn 
from there and kind of adjust your maneuver notes until you go from a zero degree plane to a 90 degree plane. But I brought Bob along and you can see Bob really loves his science and some of you are having debates about what you can do with a scientist here. This should hopefully settle the score for those of you who didn't believe it. Your scientist can reset experiments so you can do as many experiments as you want and you can store them all in your capsule. That's just, here we go, he's going to go, well, I'm not going to do it yet because I already have most of the space around Minmus missions here. But there's all kinds of different biomes you can go to, and there's plenty of biome maps available on the wiki if you're ever not sure. But I get atmospheric data, or not atmospheric data, but uh, above surface EVA reports from the midlands, the highlands, I think, the slopes, which are actually surprisingly hard to find because they're kind of everywhere, and they're actually like the sloped edges of it. But you can see I'm stacking, a, every time I get some of this data, I put it back in the capsule because your capsule can hold a bunch of stuff. But the other thing that I noticed about these temperature markers is that the ones on the south pole, you have to actually fly under them. So I had to adjust my orbit quite a bit. And on top of that, and you can see I'm continuing to try to make adjustments here, I have to wait for this planet to rotate multiple, multiple times. And once you're under like 12,000 meters in altitude, it takes a really long time because you can't time accelerate as much as you want. So we're going to skip from the south ones and go to the north ones because it's landing. And even though it looks like we're on the poles, this is actually still midlands for whatever reason. But Bob is not flying. Ronnie is not flying. Actually, the probe core that is slapped on top of this is flying. So even though Ronnie, Ronnie or Ronnie or Roan is a pilot. Now, I've had some of you comment that uh, my designs are not the most efficient for rockets. I'll agree here. <laughs> That's a terrible landing. But we landed anyway. Uh, yeah, two LV-909s, definitely more than sufficient. You can probably do this with one rocket. In fact, you can probably do all of this with just uh, a vertical stage. And that's going to be very important for a coming video where uh, one of the contracts that you get is a challenge to land the same ship on the moon on Minmus and uh, on Kerbin all in one mission. So that'll be something that we'll definitely get to do here. But that means that this kind of design isn't really going to cut it. This is more of a travel around Minmus and make it work. But you can see I have the light on by pressing L just so things can be seen a little more quickly. But we're going to skip a little bit and go ahead and go to the pole landing because I didn't want to get on the pole of Minmus as we see Kerbin and the moon in the distance from Bob's vantage point. And once again, Bob not having to fly. But he's having a good time here. So I'm actually going to be landing on daylight, which is always a little eerie to see how long daylight can last on the top here. But we don't have a ship that can is fully capable of landing in every single biome because, once again, not the most fuel efficient thing ever. But I still like the view. It's just eerie enough for me. There I just realized, oh, wait, I just about crashed into the surface. Because 86, 87 meters per second is actually quite a bit. And I know some people have uh, wondered just a little bit about well, I'm not really sure how to put it, but some of the video quality that we have going on here, I know that's bandy cam. I know some of it looks a little mad. That's one reason I try and land in the daylight. So I apologize if like some of the backgrounds look a little washed out here, but still just the same. The other details of the ship are working fine. And one other mistake that I made before here, you may have noticed I went from orbit to surface. One reason I had a big jump on my last landing while doing those temperature gauges was that I wasn't paying attention to my surface speed. My orbital speed was zero, but my lateral speed was still pretty high. So when you're landing like that, just little details like that, that's easy to forget if you're not paying attention. You're like, oh, it's Minmus, who cares? Yeah, you want to decrease your surface speed to zero because that's very important. But space near Minmus, we already have that data, so it doesn't really matter very much here. So we're just going to go down, down, down very slowly. We have gone from accelerated time to normal time. As you can see, I plant flags for what biomes we've made just because that is good to do later because I expect to eventually do more science here. Although I'm not going to cheese out and just get all of the science I possibly can in one mission from Minmus because I want to unlock some things later on. Although as you'll see by the end of this, a lot of this orbital work and everything will, sub will unlock a substantial portion of the place, but just going down the surface, my landing legs can easily handle a two meter or three meter landing. And there's the sun and there's a very nice shadow. And here we are landed on the pole of Minmus, more science to get from surface sample EVA. And I think this is a really nice picture. And then I forget that I use my wow hot keys of control Z for uh, taking a screenshot in Steam. Because, hey, that's what I've always used to take screenshots for a long time. But unfortunately, Control z as you can clearly see, made my ship just fly a little higher up in the atmosphere. And I'm about to do a burn towards the ground until I realize, hey, wait a minute. 
We didn't reach escape velocity, so Bob gets an extra jump from user error or pilot error, and we get another little view around and about. So that's not all bad. So just looking at the sun once again, and for those of you who are not aware, being on the poles means that a day can last far longer than a day. A night can last far longer than a night. The sun doesn't always go down across the horizon, although I didn't stick around long enough to really see how that changes considering that Minmus is actually not on a planar orbit. Minmus is on a uh, inclined orbit. So there is Carbon once again as we're just slowly, slowly drifting down. Word to the wise kiddos, just fire your engines very lightly. Just, I mean, I mashed Control-Z. is like, screenshot! And there you go. But still, that's, that's fuel that I could use for later. But my fuel budget isn't that tight. I'm going to go just to one more biome, I think, after this. Because there's a few that I can get to from the poles relatively easily. But yeah. Bob is actually going to be able to do landing and do some more science at new places. As once again, the shadow is just so big because it's like afternoon all the time. So this time, just the materials bay, and we have confirmed that we are on the poles. But I'll, but I don't have any mods for actual uh, a quest or observational changes here. But Ronnie Kerman, I could have actually brought him out, but I decided to be a little bit of a role player and be like, oh, he was stranded in his pod for months. He probably shouldn't be coming back in, but I have like the crappiest rescue missions ever, apparently, because my uh, people, I just send them on other missions, because you want to stack missions as best you can. And one thing about crew reports that's pretty important as well, you'll see, hopefully I do this with Bob on the video here, is that you can't really stack crew reports very well from places. You've got to actually take the data from your command pod and put it back in, but you'll see the gravity here on the poles just as well as the other places being knowing how to do rcs is very nice but yeah once again bob you can collect the data remove the data right click to restore and the module can be used again that's why you bring a scientist you don't need to do that for the thermometer you don't need to do that for the barometer the materials bay the goo canister i believe you do i believe the gravitron detector you do as well i'm not sure if there's another one that needs to be uh, reset like this but once again, I just I just like showing this because Bob is this is the happiest I have ever seen Bob in Kerbal Space Program. Bob is usually the person who's just sad and angry all the time, but right here he is just stoked. This is like Minmus the dream making it happen. So I just want to show the big, big, big Bob smile. So there we go. We're gonna go ahead and Bob's just taking it all in. Those teeth. Just 1.0 update. This is what you've been building towards. Ooh ah. Uh, Ooh, uh, by the way, take an EVA report. What do you know? The ground is nice. So we'll just get to that, get the flag, and then carry on here. Because once again, flag is just going to be, these are poles. We're all good. I don't remember if I wrote something clever. Poles, not as big as you think. Weird that science data is same on both sides of Minmus. I only say that because there's other places, even in our own solar system, where the North Pole and the South Pole actually have surprisingly different chemistry. So, just things to keep in mind. But for purposes of Kerbal Space Program, yes, we're just in the poles as Bob is going to bounce, bounce, bounce back to the capsule. RCS back to the capsule because we know what happens when you jump on Minmus. Thanks, Valentina. That was part of her uh, service report. And then there you go, all the science back in. And just instead of boring you with going around every biome, here's the haul that I got on that mission, 1474.4 science. That's a lot of science. Now, and this will be probably the biggest science mission I've done in the interim here. I have done a few other little missions that do involve some science. I actually did one mission that involved doing a, a tourist one to go around the moon in Minmus, and I had a rescue mission as well. That got a tiny bit of science. But yeah, this is the most substantial haul that I'll have. So this lets me unlock things like nuclear rockets. This lets me unlock things like bigger engines. And more importantly, eight experience gain, six experience gain, advanced to level one, advanced to level two. So Bob is a cooler scientist. And here are the people that I have. I made the mistake of buying some crew. Don't buy crew. There's enough rescue missions where you can fill out your crew that way. Get paid for getting crew. It's fairly simple. I'll do another just rescue mission on camera just so you all can see kind of what it's all about for meeting things in orbit. But speaking of things that meeting things in orbit, actually first, 
One thing to keep in mind is that I did want to show that, look, finally, after all this time, my reputation is still not great, but I finally got a mission for out of this system, which is exploring Ike. Now you get a pretty substantial advance for doing that, and you get a pretty good completion bonus for doing that. So, and all you got to do is just explore Ike, land on Ike, transmit and recover data from Ike. This is the thing that I was very confused about not getting it on Minmus. So we'll get that. But Ike is going to be down the line here. What I wanted to show you, I think for this video, probably last based on time, is the space station. I said I'd show you all a little bit about launching a space station before, and we're going to be doing that today. Now, the mission for the space station has a few requirements. It has to house like five or seven Kerbals. It has to uh, have scientific equipment. It has to have an antenna to transmit. It has to have a viewing cupola. And this is kind of a shoddy first crack at design here. And also a new launch system, which I call the Big 3 launch system. It would have multiple uh, big fuel tanks on it, but I ran out of weight limit. Because I don't, I don't really have the funds just yet to max upgrade my uh, launch pad. But here we go. Notice all the struts around the decoupler That's because in the middle. That's because there's a docking port on the bottom. This has five docking ports on the other end. The idea of a space station is that I want multiple things to be able to dock with it, but this is three Rockamax big engines, whatever you call them, the mainsails, on the bottom. And this is in the new atmosphere, although this launch does work in the old atmosphere. You'll notice a little bit of a wobble at the top. I'll show you the workaround for why that works, because there's actually a fuel tank at the top here. I don't play with it in this one, but in my subsequent launch, because there's multiple parts of the space station. This is only one. That means we need to dock it. That means we need to get it in orbit. And pretty much this launch system is not designed to do too much other than get heavy things that need to be in orbit in orbit. That means that my mission to Ike, my mission to Eve, my mission to Duna, anything like that, I can use this launch system to put piecemeal parts of a spaceship together and make it work. Now I have the fuel lines feeding from the outside end. So those outside engines are going to go first. And you can see that I have the throttle really low because I don't want to go too fast in the lower atmosphere. And also because I have the old atmosphere on, I need to be doing my gravity turn early. I crank up the acceleration here. In fact, I think this may set things on fire. Because 400, 500. I'm not tipping forward because I have two sets of winglets. They're not even aligned. But there we go. You can see the uh, contract to the right here. I have to support seven Kerbals and I have to have stability for 10 seconds. So there's our money count right now, 800,000. And we're flying, we're flying, we're flying. Notice that I have Bromi and uh, uh, we have two Kerbals here that are going to be part of the space station. Uh, Virala Kerman is actually sitting in the science bay. And we have a little bit of a wobble here. Now this is because there's a fuel tank in the front that um, is there's more weight in the front than there is in the back. My fuel tank in the back is actually emptying. And what I should have done, and I didn't do here, is if you press Alt and right click, you can transfer fuel. And that's, you don't even have to have fuel lines because as long as your parts are able to cross feed fuel, you can transfer there. But all I'm trying to do is to get a nice 100 by 100 orbit. This is a really good guide marker for me later on too. And I'm not going for the perfect orbit right away because you can always adjust it for minimal fuel expense in orbit. But my trajectory is not entirely ballistic, which is kind of nice. And we have a 99 by 107, which isn't bad. And the other thing is that I have a poodle engine as soon as this big rocket max is done. So I kind of have to guess and check just how much it's going to take. But this is a behemoth. And you're going to see this is a theme that you run into with launching gigantic things like this and then trying to mash them together in orbit. That being, oh, by the way, <laughs> this is a pain in the butt to move. I don't, because there are, there's a piling cupola there, there's actually a little bit more control with the rotation here, but future things that I launch for the space station where there won't be pilots or anything, there's going to be a problem. But you see, the Rocket Max, fortunately, or the mainsail has thrust vectoring, so it's pretty easy to correct this. You'll see that I try and burn halfway around the node, but I start my burn really, really early. My estimated burn is only like 40 seconds, and I start at a minute 10. That's because, this is just me guessing and checking, the Poodle, uh, is not nearly as strong. So you see I actually ended up firing my engines late and now I'm going to be giving a really nasty big periapsis. Fortunately uh, you can correct this just kind of in orbit. So it's not going to be perfect but I needed to continue my uh, burn here. Like I said this is all stuff that's correctable. 
this is built to have a little bit of excess fuel like I said the uh, there is a fuel tank attached to the uh, service bay on the bottom of that where all the docking ports are part of that is so that there can be docking ports on it without the service bay being an issue and here are my tiny tiny uh, and I do have upgraded uh, solar panels from here but for now here's our tiny tiny solar panels they're little they get the job done we don't need all the power we just need enough power to make it work as we're going into orbit. Now another thing that I underestimated but is very important to know from the uh, 0.01 and 0.02 patches is that solar panels are not nearly as effective as they used to be throughout the game. In fact, as you get further away from Kerbal, the sun, it becomes less effective by a lot, by like real life standards. Like real life, solar panels not nearly as strong around uh, Jupiter as we, here's the alt right click thing. You alt right click and you hit in and you see there that fuel tank that was in the front that had more it already shifted the center of mass to the back here and you can just transfer fuel that way by the way I'm cross feeding through struts that docking ports not really attached to the uh, the uh, decoupler that's there but you can just totally do it you just right click I'm not right clicking there I'm just checking the fuel you alt right click and press enter press out it's a very important thing to do very good way to know your missions but this is still taking its dear sweet time we're gonna have an ugly orbit but that's okay and this is called uh, fun town sky park because I guess somebody won a contest and wanted the name of the most ridiculous thing possible and then that wasn't uh, acceptable because it was offensive and so they went with something chipper and happy and it's all about the science but science is boring so they need uh, I don't know Science and numbers are really boring. I know it's like there's a whole Parks and Rec episode about that for those of you that watch that show as we have an orbit that's good enough to actually fix. But science and numbers are very important in this game, so I guess hopefully those of you that are watching can be a little more appreciative. But all you got to do here, you want to bring down your orbit, burn retrograde on the periapsis, which is the bottom of your orbit, the PE on the maneuver mark, on the maneuver node, you want to increase your orbit, burn prograde because you're still flying in the same direction no matter what. I don't really know a great way to explain why accelerating this way works other than if you have a bike, try rotating the tire with a stick and just keep hitting it with the stick as it rotates faster and faster and same idea, same exact idea. But that's a terrible explanation and although I used to be a teacher, I didn't teach physics. So here's the second part and this was actually a flawed series of launches unfortunately for time's sake um, I'm not going to show you the first failure of it just because I derped with the uh, and this may actually be the first uh, ended, or the first ship that went up because I derped with the fairing and the fairing actually blocked the docking port and it doesn't work but you already noticed there's a lot more wiggle wobble wiggle wobble here so that's not good uh, but it's okay because if you fail in career mode, it costs money, but I, don't, I only have little probes on here. In fact, I have two things. One is another uh, hitchhiker capsule on the bottom here to get us to the seven person thing. And under the fairing is a little tug. That tug's very important because it's going to let me move parts around onto the, uh, onto the space station. And once I get ships up there to try and build later, it'll let me do that. But once again, this is just a orbit launching system I'm not trying to do too much more it does cost around a hundred thousand funds per launch so I had to eat quite a bit of cost but fortunately as I can grind out other contracts because contracts are not exactly finite if you pass time and wait long enough they will keep coming back so we're going up in the orbit. once again we have a little bit of wiggle here that's because the rocket max fuel tank on the top is full because there's no engine attached to it and the rocket max fuel tank on the bottom is not so full so once again, what I need to do, and I think I do it right here, because once again, post commentary is fun. If you right click on the fuel tank, anytime now, this is really the time I should be doing it. If you right click on the Rockamax fuel tank at the top, you can transfer fuel to the bottom, and it makes it work very nicely, very well. But obviously, I was enjoying the wiggle, 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 wobble here, which, yeah, there we go. So you didn't get to see it, but you got to see the uh, theory on it before. All right, so we're flying. We're trying to match orbital velocities and everything. And for those of you who are not aware, 
and or may have missed prior videos. You don't actually need maneuver nodes to meet things in orbit. You need to be able to set things in target mode, and you need to know a few basic concepts. Orbital velocity changes based on your altitude. So if you're higher up in orbit, stuff that's below orbit view is actually going to pass by you. So my theory here is you'll see the markers pass by is because I have this part, as you can see, the debris is actually from the uh, first failed attempt at putting the space station together. We're going to be getting a lot of debris here on this mission just because I don't like money. Um, but as I have this space station part passing up above the orbit, you're going to see as we pass the markers here that it keeps going down here. That's because the stuff in lower orbit's actually catching up. Once again, you don't need maneuver nodes to see it. It just helps you do it a little bit faster. So now we're at 400,000. You're going to see the other indicator move. And then once you get close enough together, it's important that you both kill your regular target velocity and you try and match orbits as much as possible. The reason you want to do both is that if you just kill your relative velocity, you still may be in a different orbit. So you may careen off and away from each other. But if you can match your orbits first, then kill your velocity while you're pretty close, then you'll be able to start initiating docking maneuvers. So notice our separation. Each orbit, and it takes a little bit of time, I like doing above like a apoapsis of uh, 120 or 130 because that lets me time accelerate at 100 times time acceleration. Let's see, we're getting ever so closer. You just want those indicators to get really close until you're right there. This is, this is the absolute best way to meet things in orbit. The reason that you want to take passes like this is you can see the target velocity. That's relative velocity to you. It, at first it was like 1900 meters per second and now we're all the way down to like, and see there we go, 2.9 kilometers. <laughs> cannot, cannot really do better than that. We're at 500 meters per second and once we go to the next orbit it's going to be going from burning way too much fuel just to try and catch up to letting your orbits do its own thing and changing the energy. But we're starting to get here close, and I'll just go ahead and say this was a very, very nasty space station thing to move. I did not appreciate just how much I missed the inline reaction wheel for when I did this in a 0.24 before. This is a horrible thing to try and navigate, but I'm going ahead and putting myself in position, trying to burn retrograde just once, just once. Look at how much RCS fuel I'm using. I actually had to cut the big RCS tank, and all the only RCS tank that is on this entire thing is on the little probe that's inside the fairing. But one burn with that mainsail engine just to uh, kill my target velocity. See, we've already matched orbits close enough, not quite enough, but killing velocity is gonna be good here. And then we can, and then we can match up eventually. So we just wanna wait until we're close and just tiny, tiny burns. The mainsail even can still do tiny burns, but I'm really trying to abuse the thrust vectoring as best I can, but 7.4, and 7.4 is not one of those, it's close enough, it's good enough. You really want to take it all the way down to zero. Actually, there's a mission for taking things down to zero, so that's good as well. But here we go, Skytown Fun Park, and then this is the Fun Park Ferry. Point two is decent enough, so the other thing I'm going to do is you can see our orbits are not awesome, but I can use the tug to fix these orbits all right. So what I do is right click, I move all the fuel out of the big rock and max tank in the back. You can see the camera shift with the center of mass. Now keep in mind, I did not finish transferring the fuel because I clicked off. You actually gotta stay on it the whole time. So you know, one more time, right click, right click, in, in, and it's alt right click. Very important trick, very big word to the wise. Now that that fuel tank is empty, it's just gonna be entirely on the tug and shit. So, Lesson learned, fairings plus extended solar panels is bad. So this is my third launch of trying to put the fun Skytown Fun Park together. Just this is this is way over budget. And you can see actually the tug has a uh, has a whole like decoupler ring on it. That's just how I had to make it. It's not the best tug I've ever made, but here's actual docking in actual real time. Like I said, this is a pain to dock. What you want to do is you, first off, you can right click to target the actual docking port. You can right click to steer from the docking port, so just so it's all together. And I kind of cheat here, but it's totally acceptable in my mind to do this. You can use the bracket keys, the right bracket or left bracket to switch targets. 
And what I do is actually use the bracket keys to slide and just adjust the target ship because you want to have these ports together. These are actually approaching each other at 0.1 meters per second. And I swear, if you're not familiar with docking or if you're trying to dock something this big, that 0.1 meters per second feels like it's going really fast off the rails. But yeah, I'm just having to use my RCS and I want to put my prograde vector inside the target prograde vector. That way you know that you're actually getting close. Chase camera, some people prefer it. I like the free camera just because it gives me a better sense of 3D space. But this is just such a big monster. I mainly just hope not to actually collide but hit this because you got you to gotta hit the docking port slow and then you got to give them a chance to actually snap together. And I'll be honest with you, you're just seeing the end part of this as the magnetism is actually putting them there. We have a bigger space station. This actually took about three orbits to get them close enough to make it work, but I thought I'll do a different demonstration of docking that's a little bit simpler, but we do have contracts complete. Yay, contract complete, contract complete. So that's about going to be it for this one. So there's a space station in the sky. There's other contracts to turn out, and we're actually getting fairly close to being able to go through the window for Duna. But that's it for now. This is Asher with Kerbal Space Program. I hope you found this pretty informative here, as I'm going to be very disappointed very quickly that I can't use the orbital scanner because I didn't know that you have to be in a polar orbit. Perform orbital survey. Nope. All right, so that's something that I'll have to do at a later time. But just the same, it's good to have the space station there. It's an important step. You'll see I actually move the solar panels down just a little bit, so it keeps having power. But we have seven people. We have all kinds of science that we can do. The science is currently researching, even though there's not a lot of new science associated with it. But yeah, cool stuff. Like I said, real actual progress is I can go ahead and move my fuel around as much as I want to. Nobody's in the hitchhiker canister, so that's not going to matter. And let's see here. It doesn't really matter too much where the fuel goes because the idea is that these can all cross feed. You can cross feed through fuel uh, through uh, docking ports as well. So if I dock another ship or dock another fuel tank to this, I will be able to go ahead and get it there. But there is my tug. That is a tug that is honestly not very great. I may have to send an upgraded tug with a uh, inline reaction wheel or something because turning things sucked. Or maybe I need to put more than four uh, RCS ports on there but here we go pretty much that's gonna be it for now this is Asher as we're just doing some last kind of maintenance here moving the mono propellant back I barely made it but thanks for watching thanks for sticking around it's been fun we're gonna be working at next episode towards preparations for bigger missions better missions things to come because it's I have some new contracts for Ike after some of this playing and we'll talk about that more next time but that's it for now thanks for watching take care